I want to very quickly, uh, you know, uh, get into a conversation, uh, a Q and A questions. But I thought I, what I would do by way of introduction is give you a context for the work of Iman, the organization itself, somewhat of a sociological context, so you can understand where it comes from uh, and how it you know, blends in uh, this work comes out of a tradition of Islam in America. It comes out of a tradition of historical community organizing uh, that is uniquely American in some ways. Um, that, uh, as Jeff was alluding to, of course, you know, community organizing on the south side of Chicago is one of the first grants that we received uh, from this thing called the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. Um, it's a very interesting uh, aspect of the Catholic Church in the United States. Once a year, the Catholic Church, um, instead of just supporting the more community service-based work, such as feeding the poor, taking, they provide money to work on campaigns that reduce poverty, that deal with policy issues on the ground through this consortium they call the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. And Barack Obama got his first community organizing grant from that foundation, as did we. And so it was, a, it was an interesting parallel. But it, so I want to give you the context of this tradition, where Iman comes from in relationship to that, and then maybe play a couple of videos that give you a more visual illustration of our work, and then again, uh, open it up for a conversation. Okay, sound good? All right. Um, so let me give you a sense of, first of all, the historical context here for a moment. Um, Muslims in America, by this point, you should, most of you, I think, have had opportunities to at least engage this subject on some level. You should all know by now that Islam in America is an integral part of the American story, right? Um, it is, uh, although it has been a challenge in some years to kind of put, assert that story, both internationally and domestically, right? There are still sometimes people, of course, within sectors of the United States that look at Islam as a foreign religion. And there are certainly people outside of America that perceive Muslims and Islam in America as being something as foreign, something very different from and, uh, uh, the kind of larger cultural context. Yet the truth is very different. Uh, in many ways, uh, Islam's experience in the United States is rooted in the transatlantic slave trade. Uh, in part, the African presence of uh, Muslims are undeniable in uh, coming, many coming through West Africa. Um, and certainly, you know, you can find even in some of the more historic movies chronicling the saga of slavery in the United States, one of the most famous ones um, before 12 Years a Slave now of, um, was, anyone remember the movie Roots? Anyone remember Roots? And uh, uh, at, uh, in, the, in the center of uh, Roots was a protagonist, you remember his name? Anyone remember the name? Kunta Kinte, right? Who was a, mass, a Muslim from the Mandinka tribe. He was a Mandinka, right? And there, of course, his story, and you know, throughout that story in the movie, there were moments about, you better not let Master catch you praying like that, right? Um, they would come in. And it, for many Americans, it's funny when you bring this up, because of course they're familiar with the story of Roots, but they, oh yeah, he was Muslim. And in fact, there are many stories of people like Kunta Kinte. There were people like Omar bin Said, right? Who literally, not only uh, p slaves who practice Islam on the plantation, who of course had to do so in utter secrecy, because the conditions of slavery were absolutely brutal, as we know. It's a part of our history that we still grapple with and are uh, open about a very dark chapter in American history. Nonetheless, on that, in that context, um, you still found people who, in the midst of extraordinary circumstances, were kept components of their faith tradition alive, right? So Umar Bayin Said, even today, you'll find a good portion of the Qur'an he wrote from memory while in captivity, which is an absolute amazing achievement, right? If you, some of you, if you've seen 12 Years a Slave, 
right? Which is a very difficult movie, of course, to watch. But you'll, you'll be reminded in that movie how harrowing it was, not just to, you know, uh, to write anything, let alone to be caught writing a foreign language, a foreign religion like the Qur'an, what it would have meant on the plantation. So that spirit of Islam was present in America throughout the 1800s, right? Uh, 